Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Damn, I'm glad to be back. Shout out to all the dentists that work on people's mouths and make a couple hours of their life living hell. I still got like two, three more appointments to go to. They did a deep cleaning, scaling, like getting down under the teeth and under the gums. This is very important for people to do. You got to keep your teeth. I can't be on YouTube trying to talk, talking to y'all, and all my chicklets is missing. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody trying to have no straw hole. The straw hole being where you shove that straw through without even having to open your teeth. Just straw in your mouth. Today we're going to get into a couple different things with it being Friday. I want to get into First Timer's Guide to Jail. I've touched on this before, but I didn't feel like I had done it justice. So we can get more into, for guys that have never been to jail, how to move. Things to do, things to not do. The feelings that come with being incarcerated. I want to get into some of these old heads. The old heads being these guys that have been down a long time. Came in as young men. Young men just like yourselves. Time passes, they become old. People think, oh, he's old, I could take something from him. Not knowing that man has been in prison longer than you've been alive. He didn't see more and done more. And the means of violence and survival that most people will ever do in a lifetime. So that's what we're going to do today. First time this guy to jail, how it is being in jail or prison, and them old heads, them lifers. Y'all know how to seen it, you know how to lived it, so let's relive. When it comes to jail, prison, incarceration in general, there is every type of attitude, every type of lifestyle, every type of person you can think about. But when it comes to violence, and the types of people, I've narrowed it down to about four. You've got the guys that will not fight. No matter what happens, they're not fighters. They're not made for it. They're scared. They will not fight. You take everything from them. And some of the people watching might be that guy. Man, I would just get everything taken from me. I would never be able to fight. You have those guys. Then you have the guys that make a lot of noise and act like they'll fight and try to use the scare tactic but don't want to fight and won't fight they'll talk all that threaten everybody do this and do that but then when it's time to actually fight they talk their way out of it they find a way not to fight they do this or they do that hey man look let's talk about it pull you to the side and it's I'm sorry I disrespected you, man. I shouldn't have done that. You know, uh, I won't do that again. I apologize. I don't want to fight. You got those guys. Then you got the guys that don't want to fight, but will fight. That can be a lot of different people. That can be a man that doesn't like fighting, but will fight. That can be a man that's done a lot of fighting in life, says, hey, that's over with. But if you push him to the limit, we'll fight. And then I've seen guys that had never been in a fight in their life, fought for the first time, won, and realized that wasn't that bad. I got hit in the face a couple times, so what? That's the I don't want to fight, but will fight type. Then you've got the aggressors, the violent ones, the guys that look for problems, look to fight, love to fight, are good at fighting. They're either big or skilled or crazy in the head like victimizing people taking things from people they're always in the middle of something those are four different types of guys you're gonna definitely either be or deal with everybody all every type i just mentioned if you're watching this you're gonna fall in one of those categories with every single one of those type of men they all have one thing in common you're gonna make friends Friends while locked up can be the gift or it can be the curse. With the guy that isn't going to fight, and I've seen a lot of them, 
they flock to other guys like themselves because guys aren't going to kick it with guys they can't relate to or guys that aren't into the same thing as them. I've actually seen dudes sit out at the table and play role-playing games like Magic the Gathering, um, other games like that where they got these different dice and stuff. and It's crazy. You're a wizard or an orc or a fairy or something. I've seen guys play those games. Those are the guys that just want to fly below the radar. Nobody's going to bother us. We're over here playing our little game. That's a good group of guys, but here's the problem. If one guy comes over there and messes with one of them, all the rest of them are going to turn their back. Everybody is going to try to make friends once you get locked up. You've already lost your family. If you've got kids, you're separated from your kids. If you've got a job, you no longer go to your job. You no longer have your co-workers. You no longer have the comfort of going home, locking your door, and being safe in your home. You no longer have the phone to pick up to call all the people you've met throughout life's journeys. Everybody is going to make a friend, friends, associates, whatever you want to call it. With the guys that, you know, act tough but won't fight, it's weird when you watch who they kick it with. Because nobody knows that they won't fight or they're not really tough until that moment goes comes. So they'll kick it with hardcore dudes. They'll kick it with gangsters. They'll kick it with dudes that, that thump and push that knife. And then at the moment that they're exposed for being a fraud, a fake, a phony, you know, Fisher-Price, Walt Disney, make-believe, not really about that life, dudes are going to fall back from them. Like, man, soft-ass dude had me thinking he was going to do something. Now got us all looking stupid, wouldn't even go in there and fight that dude. Hell no. Now, them dudes that don't want to fight but will fight, they usually chill with more docile guys that are like themselves. A lot of these guys are lifers. The lifers are the number one guys you see that try to fall back. They stay real humble. They don't bother nobody. They're big on disrespect. But at the moment that they have to do something, they do it and they go way beyond that. Their friends are very, usually very similar to them. Quiet, except when they're around each other. They've all been known for acts of violence in the past. So people know they're quiet. They don't bother nobody. But if you go over there and push his button, he's going to snap. The biggest problem out of all the ones I named are the tough guys. The guys that are constantly into something. Because they are going to kick it with other guys that are known to be brolic, brody. They're going to kick it with other guys that are known to put in work, extort people, hurt people, beat people up, stab people. But the problem with that is when you put a whole bunch of alpha males together, they're eventually going to start to get at each other. They're going to start to clash. And not only that, everybody knows who they are. When you're the pod bully or the guy that's going around messing with everybody and extorting people, pretty much everybody's going to say what's up to you because they don't want no problems. Them other three categories of guys are going to, when you pass by, hey, what's up, big dog? What's good with you? Hey, you all right? You need anything? They're going to do that to try to, a, get a feel to make sure that you're not on their radar. Like, if they got a problem with you and you say what's up to them nine times out of ten, it's going to be, don't fucking speak to me. You know what I mean? Or they're going to let you know in some form of aggression, don't speak to them. But in due time, these guys are the ones that end up turning on each other because the guys that are really violent like that usually aren't loyal to a whole bunch of anything except themselves and the way they function. Those guys stay in a lot of trouble. They end up shipped from here, shipped from there, getting rode off the pod, in and out the hole. I was one of those guys that I didn't I didn't go around starting trouble, but if I had to fight, I would fight. That's the category I'd put myself in. I never ran around running my mouth all day trying to intimidate people and then wouldn't fight. I never was the, I'm not going to fight. You're just going to take it from me. Please don't hurt me. I'm scared. I was never the, I'm going to run around here being a big bully. There were times I came out and I addressed things and I may have came off aggressive towards a whole lot of people, but it wasn't aimed towards a whole lot of people. It was aimed towards a situation. It wasn't me trying to establish dominance or nothing like that. It was, all right, this just pissed me off. I've got to speak on it or it's going to happen again. That goes back to the, 
I don't want no problems, but there will be problems. I don't want to deal with this stupid shit that's going on right here. But if this don't stop, this is where we're going. In making your friends while locked up, make sure that you don't jump into a friendship. Make sure that you're not just friendly with everybody. The friendly guy is the guy that people use. If you're friendly, people are going to eat you alive. You are a goldfish in a bowl full of sharks. And if they see that friendliness all day, every day, they're going to take advantage of it. Now, it's one thing if you're friendly and they know, okay, he can, he can get ugly real quick. You'll get a different type of respect. But when you're just overly friendly all the time, it's, hey, man, let me borrow this. And you're not going to get it paid back because you're Mr. Friendly. Friends can be good and they can be bad. Your friends can be what keep you out of trouble or what gets you into trouble. If you are somebody that's willing to fight and you build a bond or a friendship with somebody in there and you see them get themselves in a situation, you are almost damn near obligated to step up and stand behind him. Now, if you're not a fighter, nobody's going to look at you sideways when you don't step up. So if that's who you are, that's why I tell you be real to yourself and everybody else. If that's who you really are and you don't step up and defend this dude, nobody expected you to. You're not a fighter. Those dudes, they fake like they will. When they don't step up, they lose all their respect from everybody and then they fall into the he won't fight category. The guys that make friends that are just bullies, they're the dangerous ones. Because say you do beat him. Now you've got to deal with the dudes he kicks it with. You know there's going to be retaliations. You can avoid a whole lot of pain, trouble, and stress by the things you do. I've told you in the past, don't borrow things from people. You can borrow something from somebody, have every intent on paying him back. And something mess up. Your commissary slip not get scanned. Your money that somebody sends you from the streets doesn't land on your books in time. You put that commissary slip in and when they scan it, it still says you have zero dollars. Now you've borrowed stuff from somebody and they want their money. They expect their money. I could do God knows how many parts on situations of guys not having someone's money. Going to commissary and not being able to bring back the stuff they owe. I've seen a lot of guys getting drugs fronted to them, calling their mama. Hey, mama, I need you to send somebody $50. Not doing it. I don't have it. You done snorted up that dope or did whatever you did with it. They want that money. They've given you, you got three days for that, you know, that money to touch my books or for it to hit my people. And if it doesn't, we're going to have problems on the fourth day. Your mama tells you, no, nah, I'm not doing it. I've sent too much money. I'm tired of sending money. I'm not going to keep sending you money. Now you've got this guy that's, hey, what's up with that money? I ain't get that money yet. Oh, it'll be there tomorrow. Now you're running game. Don't take things from people. Do not indulge in the drugs. The gambling. Even if you're a good gambler, I don't care if you were a world star, all star poker player in the streets. You are going to lose in due time at that poker table. You're going to sit down and the guy sitting there that you think is just playing poker like you are. And the guy sitting there that you think is just playing like poker, playing poker like you are. What happens when those two guys are actually playing together? And they've got keywords, signals, little things they do to let the next man know, a hey, fold, I got this. Or both of them let each other know this is a shit hand without you picking up on it. When you're playing against two people and the odd man out, when the chips are stacked against you, you're going to lose. The phone. The phone can also be a major problem. You got some guys that are going to use that phone a lot. At one point, I was one of the guys that would use the phone a lot. I didn't keep anybody else from using the phone. My issue was with the guys that tried to control and run the phones, especially when there's several phones there and they think they're just going to take them over like it's their cell phone in their pocket. That would be my issue. If you're going to use the phone, use the phone. 
Make sure nobody else needs the phone. And if they do need the phone, say, hey, if don't nobody ask for it after you, let me get it back after you. And even then you're going to have problems. Because if he don't remember you and he forgets you asked him because he got caught up in his phone conversation and he hangs that phone up and somebody comes behind him and picks it up and you've been waiting on it. You look out your cell. Now you see somebody on the phone and you decide to go over there and say, hey, man, I had the phone next. What if that guy don't take that nicely? What if he gets up and tells you, it's my phone, punk, or says something crazy out of his mouth? Now you've put yourself in a position to where he can't talk to you like that. Everybody just saw it. So you've either got to handle it or from here on out, expect to be the victim in the situation. Your cellmate. These are all, everything I'm telling you is pretty much things that are going to help you get through your bid. Your cellmate. You want to be in a cell with somebody that you are compatible with. You don't want to be in a cell with a thief. Because when it comes time that people find out he's a thief, they're coming to your cell. Somebody decides he took my shit, I'm going in there and taking everything. There's a good chance some of your shit's going to get taken too. And when a guy goes to start snatching your stuff over, you tell him, that's my stuff. I don't give a fuck. You ain't here with a thief. You knew he was stealing shit. You ain't do nothing about it. Now, because of what he's got going on, you've got to go at it with this man. You want to be in the cell with somebody similar to you, with similar hygiene, similar points of views, similar likes, similar dislikes. I've been in cells with guys that I was really cool with out in the day room. Guys I could walk the yard with every day. I could laugh and joke with and we you know, would be good friends. And then you put us in the cell and we're either so much alike that we start <coughs> bumping heads or we're both alpha males and one of us feels like this one's trying to carry us or that one's trying to carry us. So there's a thin line in getting a cellmate that you can actually get along with. The means of getting a cellmate that you can actually get along with is not easy. I've seen dudes that didn't like their cellmates and said, hey, I don't want to hurt this dude, man. And a lot of states, I don't know every state, some states you can go to the guards, you can say, hey, me and this dude aren't getting along. Can you move me? I'm not trying to do anything to him, have him do anything to me. Some dudes are just scared of the guys they're in the cell with and will go to the police. Hey, can you please move me? And then once again, it's a roll of the dice. You might go from that situation to worse. Don't allow people to just treat you any type of way. And there's a lot of different ways you can go about addressing this. You don't have to ah, jump in somebody's face. You ain't gonna ever do that again. Nothing. You can simply, hey, homeboy, that shit wasn't cool. You can't do that no more. He's either gonna respect it or where it's ultimately gonna end up is where it's gonna end up at that moment. Now, I know that was a whole lot of talk and a whole lot of rambling, but to put it out there, you have to talk about it. So hopefully you're still here at this point. I'm going to give you one more thing before I get into the main purpose of today's stories. That being them lifers, them old guys. The last thing I want to leave you with when it comes to jail or prison is this. Mind your business. Don't put your nose where it doesn't belong. Don't chime in on conversations that you weren't invited in. Don't speak up on something that has nothing to do with you. Number two, don't be Mr. Friendly to everybody. You do not want to be everybody's friend. Because when you become friendly with everybody, you're now exposing yourself to all the bullshit that comes with every single guy in there. Trying to be standoffish and deal with nobody you know, people, man, I go to jail, I go to prison. I don't kick with nobody. I don't talk to nobody. I stay to myself. That can be good and bad. People can take that as he thinks he's better than everybody else. People can take that as he thinks he's tough. Or people can take that as he's scared. You're going to need someone to talk to. You're going to need someone to express yourself to when you're going through things. You don't have your wife no more. You don't have your mom, your dad. You're going to need to have somebody 
that you can trust, which is hard to come by. You can vent to, which is hard to come by because a lot of times guys will take what you say and run with it. But like I said, don't be the guy that just doesn't talk to anybody because it's going to draw attention to you. If you're always by yourself, people know, all right, if we want to run down on him, he ain't got nobody that's going to help him. People are going to think, like I said, oh, he thinks he's better than us. He ain't got no kicking for nobody. Or they're going to think, oh, this dude thinks he's tough. Walks around with his chest poked out all day. Let's get into the old heads in prison. Got a story on Wild Man I'm going to give y'all. Crazy story. True story. Rest in peace to Wild Man. Salute to Wild Man. Real savage, real killer. Let's get into it. With the older guys in prison, there's a lot of stigmas. A lot of things that come with them. And these are just the facts. If you are an older white male in prison, chances are people are automatically going to think you're a chomo. They're going to think you're a child molester. They don't know that you may have been locked up 30 years, got locked up in your 20s or your 30s, you're now 60, 70 years old. They don't know that you killed people back in the day. They just see an old white man and they think, yeah, that dude was touching somebody's kids. He definitely had some children tied up in the basement. He had a web browser full of porn. That's why he's in here. If you're an older white man and you go to church, people think he's a child molester. He goes to church and he hides behind that Bible to try to keep people from doing anything. They look at the older white guys as soft. They look at them as pussy, scared, bitches. There are some that carry themselves in a manner that lets you know that's not him. He's a killer. Some of these guys, it goes without saying. You don't have to second guess it. You can look at them and you automatically know that man is a killer. He's got those eyes. He looks like he's been through war. He's got the old school pen penitentiary tattoos. Tattoos in the streets that are so blurred and blobbed you can't even make them out no more. That's some of the stigmas that come with being an old white man. If you're an old black man, and these are the facts. Depending on how you carry yourself, a lot of different titles are going to be attached to you. The majority of the older black men I've seen in prison had a lot in common. Some of them were religious. Some of them more or less stuck to their cells and had a small circle. But for a large majority of them, they were killers. You didn't have to second guess whether they were killers or not. They came into the prisons in a time when the prison was real prison. It wasn't none of this bullshit you see on the internet now there wasn't guys running around playing all day and doing dumb shit and joking and pranking each other it was a hostile crazy environment here these men are 30 40 years later still in the penitentiary the penitentiary has now changed you have women in here which no offense ladies is one of the worst things to ever happen to prison because when you put women in charge of men the men Start to think, oh, she likes me. Oh, look at her. Guys start doing things that they wouldn't do if it was an all-male environment. They think they can get away with more. You catch guys pulling the dicks out. They're in the showers. They're in the cells. They're in the shadows. Just going at it when nobody's looking. I met a lot of dangerous old white men. A lot of dangerous old black men. A lot of dangerous older men in general. When it comes to the men that have been in the prison since the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the early 90s, they're an entire different breed than the guys that are coming into the prisons. Back then, these guys were toting revolvers, shotguns, you know, the 38 specials, things of that caliber, and a lot of guys carried knives. A lot of the guys that you meet in there that are lifers are in there for stabbing someone to death or bludgeoning, beating someone to death. Opposed to today where you got dudes just randomly shooting and killing innocent people. There's a difference between he's a murderer. He murdered somebody. But then there's a killer. A killer being somebody that 
saw their target, went at their target, and killed them. Not murdered them, they killed them. Anybody can commit murder. I can shoot a bullet into the air right now, it fall through your living room, hit you in the head, and I can be charged with murder. Even if I didn't have the intent of killing you. The lifers were a good experience. To meet people that will coach you and talk to you about what to do and what not to do in life is a blessing. It sucks to see someone that you know is reformed, that if released would never hurt anybody, sit there and rot away. But I understand at the same time that because of this man, somebody is in the graveyard and this is their punishment and they must fill out their sentence. I met a lot of crazy men over the years. A lot. Different levels of crazy. Talk to yourself crazy, but won't hurt nobody. Hurt everybody crazy. Anybody can get it turned on his best friend at the drop of a dime and commence to doing whatever he wants to him. And then I met the guys that were more or less would go crazy over small things. They were big on, you're going to respect me, big on principles. And the smallest thing would set them off. We have talked about wild man. And I do think, and I strongly believe that the two most violent men, craziest men I ever came across in the Department of Corrections, it would fall neck and neck between wild man and the guy John Wayne. John Wayne was a killer. Wasn't out of prison long after doing a very long sentence and killed again and is back. Wild man was a killer. He killed on the streets. Beat another inmate with a baseball bat at another compound because he thought this inmate was responsible for killing his brother on the streets. Only to find out while going to court and everything that the man he beat with that bat that day on that, on that field out there in that rec yard wasn't even the right man. Wild man, he cut people, stabbed people, and done things that you only see in movies. He was the definition of a lifer, the definition of a convict, as well as the definition of savage. You could go from talking to him one second and see all the lights in his eyes just go off. Like a scary movie, like his eyes just change. And you can tell that something's on his mind and that the guy you were just talking to is no longer there. He's left and now you're talking to Wild Man. Wild Man didn't always push that blade. Wild Man would throw hands with you too if you wanted to. The great thing about the type of person he was, he was willing to admit when he was wrong. You don't meet a lot of that. When it comes to crazy people, like I've told you, People play crazy, they're not crazy. If you say, I'm crazy, you're not really crazy. Crazy people don't know they're crazy. They'll argue with you on their crazy thoughts to try to convince you into believing the crazy shit that's going through their head. Wild man is staying in the cell. I'm in 20. Wild man is next door, living to, next door to me in cell 21. All the way at the end, underneath the staircase. He likes it back there. I liked my cell. Because no one had a reason to be walking by my cell and looking in because my cell wasn't in the middle of the, of the day room. It wasn't nowhere where guys would pass by unless they were going to see Wild Man. Wild Man's got a cellie named Mike. Mike is a white dude from Hopewell. Mike went on to be my cellie um, a couple years after this. I thought Mike was real quiet, cool guy, didn't bother nobody. A little heavy set white guy, you know, cool dude. He ends up in the cell with Wild Man. I would always know when Wild Man woke up in the morning because the first thing he would do was he would roll him a cigarette. He would smoke the cigarette. And while he was smoking it, he would cough. And when I mean cough, like one of those hacks that you could hear from way, way far away. Well, he's in a cell right next to me. The only thing separating us is a concrete wall, but we share the same vent. Our toilets are vented in this little closet in between our cells. On the other side, it's his toilet, our toilet with holes in it, and you can hear I'd always know when he was awake. Him and his cellmate, wild man wasn't big on talking. His cellmate wasn't big on talking. Cellmate listened to a lot of music, audio slaves, Soundgarden, Nickelback, stuff of that nature, rock, right? 
I'd always see Mike walking around, and I'm like, damn, this dude ain't never in the cell. And what I didn't know at the time was that he didn't really fuck with Wild Man. Didn't really like Wild Man. Wild Man would be gone all day at work, and Mike would be in the cell. But as soon as Wild Man came back, Mike would leave out the cell. He'd either wait and go to rec, go talk to a couple guys he knows, or hang out in the day, day room area. He didn't like being in that cell with Wild Man, right? One night, I hear arguing. I hear both of them arguing. But I more or less hear wild man getting loud. I'll fuck you up in here, youngin. Or oh, you got me fucked up. You think that you I won't I won't do nothing to you. And I've told y'all before, wild man's an older man. He's in his 50s, maybe mid, late 50s. He's got that penitentiary body that shows you, like you can look at him and be like, all right, he's been here a long time. At one point, he worked out a lot. He stopped doing that, but he's still got that solid, you know, hard body frame. Wild man was maybe 5'10", 5'11", black man, maybe 225, 230 pounds. Had these old school big black, we call them the chomo glasses. Big black penitentiary glasses with the big thick round frames, square frames. Big ass mole, like a mole. Looked like a brown M&M on his forehead that stuck way out, right? Just to let y'all, you know, get a visual image of what, what wild man looked like. Always kept his boots shined. Always had his shirt tucked in. He had been in prison a long time. And you could tell by the way he carried himself. I hear him and Mike over there arguing one night. And I can tell it's about to go somewhere. I'm thinking, this is bad, man. Wild man's going to stab this boy to death. We're going to go on lock. And this is crazy, man. Like I'm just not trying to hear it. But you can't help but hear it. They're so close to us. The argument continues, 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 and all of a sudden I just hear. Saw, oh shit. Wild man's done split Mike's shit wide open. Wild man's done punched Mike in his face, probably knocked him out. Ain't no telling what he's doing over there, right? I hear a little bit of tussling. No more words being said, just tussling. I hear somebody get slammed against the door. I hear some mumbling. Can't really make out what they're saying. It's like like if you grab somebody after you've done something to them, then you whisper something to them. You can hear mumbles, but you can't hear what's being said. And then it goes silent. I'm waiting. The next morning, the count time, I'm like, man, they're going to find a body in that cell. Something bad happened last night. I know it, right? They pop doors for what's called first movement, standby for chow. First movement is they, it's controlled movement. So if everybody's got school, or anybody's got to go to work, they all leave at one time. You're on a list so they know where everybody's going. And then guys go eat chow. The guys at work and stuff go to chow before everybody else. They pop the doors for first movement. I see Mike come out the cell, go over to hot pot, get him some hot water, make him some coffee. But he's, as he goes by, he's got his back turned to me. So I'm waiting to see what his face looks like. I hear that hacking, that coughing. That started about 30 minutes early. And every time Wild Man smoked, he would hack. <laughs> and he'd, as soon as he catches breath, he'd hit that roll up. <laughs> he'd go back to hacking. Man been smoking non-filter cigarettes longer than some of y'all been alive, right? I hear the hacking as I'm standing in my door. I'm not going out there and sit in the day room. I'm standing in my doorway till they call it, right? I'm just waking up, looking around. I'm brushing my teeth, got ready for the day. I'm dressed, got my shirt tucked in, my ID clipped to my shirt pocket. I hear a wild man in his doorway hacking. I look over to the right. A wild man has got a big ass knot on the side of his eye. No, he did not let Mike the Neutron, just a regular dude, swell his shit up like that, right? I'm thinking Mike's face has got to be messed up. Mike comes over there towards the cell and sits at the bench right there. There ain't no marks on Mike. There ain't nothing wrong with Mike's face. Mike ain't got a single mark on him. I told you me and Wild Man were cool. So I look over. Wild Man, you good? Hits a cigarette, hacks a little bit, gets his breath. Yeah, I'm good. Everything's great. Good morning. How you doing, youngin? I'm in prison, man. Could be better, but I ain't got no complaints, man. Just getting this day started. Me and him get to talking that evening. And he runs me down with what happened. Him and Mike got into a disagreement over something. And Wild Man jumped in his face and grabbed Mike by the throat. And when he did, Mike popped his ass. Boom! Punched him in his eye. Grabbed Wild Man and rushed him to the door and told him, you know, don't be trying to put your hands on me, man. Leave me alone. I said, what are you going to do? I know you're going to do something crazy. You can get us locked down. 
you just waiting. You gonna kill that boy, man? What the fuck are you gonna do? He said, I'm not gonna do nothing. What do you mean you're not gonna do nothing? He said, Jay, sometimes you just gotta know when you're wrong. I was dead wrong. I know wild man's crazy, but wild man's not stupid. Whatever had transpired in there that led them to arguing, wild man was at fault for. Whether he be having a bad day, thinking something crazy in his head, he was smart enough to know. Damn, I deserve to be punched in my face for what I just did. Damn, I shouldn't have grabbed a hold of that boy. If he'd have grabbed a hold of me, I'd have done the same thing. I said, so it's dead? Yeah, it's dead. It's over with. It ain't no big deal. I ain't like I ain't been to fighting before. I said, so you're just going to more or less walk around with your eyes swollen up and you're going to eat it, right? Yeah. You know, I'm a man. I know when I'm wrong. I'm a man. I can take a punch. I ain't, I've been punched before. I've punched people. I've stabbed people. Had people stab me. That's part of what happens when you're in prison. But you got to know when you're wrong. Blew my mind to think somebody had hit Wild Man and got away with it. That was not Wild Man's M.O. Wild Man's M.O. was he'd take you up out of here. He'd kill you. Even a crazy person knows right from wrong. Somebody says, oh, he's crazy. He didn't know what he was doing. There's different levels to this shit. There's insane and then there's just crazy. Wild man was crazy. He took it on the chin. Not long after that, I can't remember how long it was. I ended up getting Mike in a cell with me. Me and Mike actually get into it because Mike made a, a slick comment about one of the pictures I had on my walls. And we were still cool after that. You know, we were cool. Mike turned me on to a lot of music I had no idea about. That audio slay, that sound, uh, sound garden and you know, Nickelback and just a whole bunch of Hollywood undead. Stuff I'd never heard of. Mike opened my eyes up to, but Mike didn't like the fact that all I really listened to was rap. And we got into it. You know, that was one of the first things that irritated with me. The little com irritated me with him was the little comments he made over the whole me liking rap music and R&B and slow music. I'm a big R&B slow music guy. I love that old school 90s, you know what I mean? Early 90s, mid 90s, that Tony, 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 that Jodeci, that, that Silk, that H Town, all that old school RB. I love that shit, man. That's that, you know, that the R. Kelly before he started pissing on females and shit, and all that shit I love, you know what I mean? So he had a problem with that. Then he makes this comment about the picture on the wall, which is one of my female family members. Me and Mike get into it in the cell. We call it what it is. That's it. We remained in the cell a little bit after that. Not much talking. And then Mike went ahead and got moved out and into another cell. But yeah, oh, wild man. Took it on the chin, man. Who would have ever thought you'd get away with choking wild man and punching wild man in his face? I never imagined it. I knew what he was capable of. I'd seen what he was capable of. I'd seen him threaten whole entire groups of people. And people just look like, man, he's crazy. He's in wild man mode. Be careful with the old guys. You think that because somebody's big and got muscles, they're a threat. You think that because somebody fights a lot, they're a threat. Not always the case. Sometimes. But it's not always the case. A lot of times, those guys that have been around forever, that have seen things that they have to re-see in their mind every single day, that have done things that they have to relive every single day. Guys that were arrested at crime scenes that were smeared with blood. Bodies sprawled throughout. These guys end up in prison and then they hurt more people. And they've got to relive daily what they did on the streets. They've got to deal with the fact daily that they're never going home. And then they've got to deal with what they've done while they're in prison. Those are some of the most dangerous men you will ever meet. But they're also some of the greatest allies you can ever have in any type of drama or trouble you run into. Me having wild men on my side... Me and Wild Man didn't have the best beginning, but things cleared up. Me having him on my side always let me know that no matter what happens in here, I can take care of myself. But if it ever gets to where it's out of hand, I got somebody that's willing to take it way beyond where I'm willing to take it. I've got somebody that's got nothing to lose and that will give whatever the next man is looking for to him. So I hope y'all enjoyed that. I hope y'all that haven't been to jail, take advice on the stuff I told you with going to jail, different types of guys, things to do and things not to do. Things you definitely don't want to do. 
You can't be everybody's friend. Everybody ain't friendly. Don't find your ass getting used. Hope y'all enjoyed the story of Wild Man and the breakdown of some of the older guys that are in prison. You know, salute to the men that are behind the wall, the ones that deserve the salutes, not the ones that have done fucked up heinous acts to women, children, men, not, the, you know, the, the messed up ones, but to the ones that are in there that do deserve to come home, that made those mistakes, that have made it where they can't come home. Salute to y'all. Salute to the families that look after those guys that haven't forgotten about them. Man. Salute to all the guys that are in there trying to do better for themselves. I tell y'all these stories in hopes that you listen. In hopes that you never, ever wake up one morning and look around at those four walls, that stainless steel toilet. In hopes that you never become obsessed or start to look at your prized possessions as some commissary. That you never have to fight over a phone or a microwave. That you don't have to deal with society's worst every single day because you didn't listen to me. Wake up, people. Pay attention. This shit is bigger than Jay Williams. It's bigger than Nino Brown. It's bigger than New Jack City. Bigger than the Carter. This ain't no movie. This is real life. And no matter who you are, they will lock you up. They will put you in there with the John Waynes, the Wildmans, the Ernies. And that's not what you want. Stay out here. Do what you got to do to make it out. Save your money. Switch up your circle of friends. Look for that new job. Walk to it if you got to. Whatever you've got to do, make it happen. But anyways, y'all know it's Friday, Friday, Friday. It is payday, payday, payday. And I've got to go get this money. Got to get the men paid. Got to get back to the grind. I'm going to drop videos this weekend also. I have another dentist appointment on the 11th. It's going to screw things up. So, I'm going to push as much of this content out as I can. But y'all already know, these detention centers, these jails, institutions, prisons, they're all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in and as always y'all know what i'm doing I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained are you not entertained and like always this is jay williams let's live life to all my real ones and there are some real ones watching because y'all still watching me y'all know how we do man salute